This video is about the final programming constructs that we'll be learning about, and that's modular programming. By the end of this little video, you'll understand how programs can be broken down into modules to make programming easier. To understand modular programming, we're going to use the analogy of an office. Um, and so in this situation, at the moment, you currently can program in just a single main program. So that's very much like having a single person business who is trying to do everything. Um, it's not very efficient. And so we're going to learn how to break that program down into smaller parts. So we're going to be a lot more efficient in how we go about doing things. Okay, so in our analogy with breaking the program into little modules, we are still going to have a main program. And so that's going to be our boss which is this guy here. So he's still our main program. Um, but we're also going to have four other little modules, um, module programs. So one is going to be the cleaner. One is going to be his PA. One is going to be the mail person. And one is going to be the accounts person. So each one of these modules will represent a different way that communication can happen between the boss and the different modules. Now, keep in mind, it's really important to understand the only communication that can happen between all of these is through the phone. Um, so it's just a little setup to make, for it to make sense. The communication that happens is through the phone. And so um, you'll understand why I'm using that analogy a little bit later on. Now, our cleaner represents the first type of person who, um, or module or kind of module that the main program can call. So the boss calls the cleaner, radio, and so the cleaner doesn't have to give him any information, just calls the cleaner and says, the office needs to be clean. So he's calling him. The cleaner doesn't have to say anything else. So the boss calls the cleaner to clean. Um, there is no information is provided to the cleaner. It doesn't tell the cleaner how to clean. It doesn't tell the cleaner what to clean. The cleaner knows what he needs to do. Um, and what's more, the cleaner doesn't then call the boss up and say, hey, it's done. It's just the fact that the cleaner does it. He doesn't provide any information back to the boss. So this is a situation where a, a module is called um, and that module, no information is provided to the module and no information from the main program and no information from the module is returned back to the main program. So that's our first little type of module we have here. Now, the second type of module that we are dealing with here is the PA. Um, the boss calls his PA and says, um, I need you to send an email out to my clients and this is what I want you to say on the email and then the PA sends the email out. So, so in this situation, the actual boss does call his PA and says, send an email. The boss provides the PA with de email details, but no information is passed back to the boss. So there's information that passes from the main menu into the um, module and but no information passes or is returned from the module back to the main menu. Okay, so now we have the third type of module. Um, this is one where the boss is represented by our mailman here. So the actual main program um, calls the mailman and says, have we got any mail? So the mailman comes up and then gives the mail to the boss here. So yeah, the boss still calls the postie to deliver the mail, um, but doesn't provide the post with any information, doesn't say deliver it to here or deliver any time. He calls it and says, can I have the mail, please? Um, the postie rocks up and gives the mail to the boss. So the actual, there is no information going from the main program into the module here, but there is information being passed from the module back to the main program. Now, our final example here is the accountant, where the boss rings up the accountant and says, can I have the report, please, for this fir the first quarter? Um, and then the accountant provides the, gets the information and then sends the report back to the boss. So in this situation, the boss calls the accountant for financial reports. Um, the boss provides information to the um accountant saying this is what the actual quarter is for the reports and then the financial report is right of the for the boss so the accountant provides the boss with information so in this case the main program passes information to the module and the module rep um, pass returns information back to the main program right so why do we use modules well 
To start off with, in relation to our code, it breaks our program down into smaller parts. Um, now in Python we call modules that are called functions, and so in some ways it's actually good to sit there and think about, well, it's breaking it down into the little functions that are involved that, the, that make up the program. Um, why do we use it? Because, well, they're useful for structuring your code, so you can actually um, understand the flow of information a lot easier. It's really important if you're repeating code a lot, it means that um, you can take that repeated code and put it into a module and call it whenever you want. Um, and it's fantastic for testing and troubleshooting because you can actually go about identifying or you can write some code in a, in a function, in a module, and you can run that module and see if that module works. And if that module works, you know then that's that, that particular part works. You don't have to worry about going back and testing it. And the examples we just gave you gives you an understanding that there's four types of functions. You have one function where no information is passed, which is when the information goes from the main program to the module or to the function, and no information is returned. And we use return to refer to information that comes from a function back into the main program. The second type is information is passed from the main program, but no information is returned back to the main program. Um, the third type is no information is passed from the main program, but information is returned from the function to the main program. And finally, the fourth type is that information is passed to the main program and also information is returned from the function to the main program. So here we are. This is what it looks like in an actual program. Um, you can see that we've actually, um, I've designated, I've put some comments in here to say this is a main program and functions can be identified because functions all start with the def um, keyword. So um, define, that stands define. Define this function, this is the function name here that we've got, give nothing, get nothing, and all the other ones. In here, inside the brackets is where you pass information from the main program back um, into the actual function. Um, and then when you see something like this return, Return is where the um, function returns information back to the main program. So um, you can see these are the four different types of, of functions. So the one where you give nothing and get, you pass no information from the main program, no information returned. This one, information is, is passed, but no information is returned. This one, no information is passed, but something is returned. Um, and then finally, this one is where information is passed and um, no inf and information is returned. And you call them, and that actually is the right term, it's not just talking about phones. You do call functions by having their name and the brackets at the end of it. Um, if you are calling a function which has information that you need to pass, you have to put something in there, in the brackets. If you are also like down here, so it can be an integer or it can be a string or whatever is required. Um, if you are, um, have a function where information is returned, so it's got a returns in it, then you need to actually do something with that um, value when it comes back. In this case, in both of these cases, I am taking the value that gets returned and I am putting it into the variables here and storing them there. So I want you to pause this briefly and think what is actually going to appear on the screen if I run this program. So just pause it about here. And hopefully now you've actually worked out what you think is going to be um, going to arrive on the when I run this program, and that is the actual solution there. So if I run this code, that is what appears in the terminal. So there we are, and we'll have a bit more look at this in our next lesson.